Hi everybody. This week's lecture is actually going to be broken up into about three videos. Um, we're going to cover razor syntax. We're going to talk about um, the flow between the model controller and view um, as it pertains to our ASP.NET application. And then we'll be talking about kind of the tools that we'll be using during this um, course, which will be our entity framework and local DB for our database and data access layer. Uh, so this video will focus on Razor. So I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, what exactly is Razor, how is it useful to us, and what do we uh, use it for. Uh, so if you're following along or setting up later, we'll want to go in and actually create a new project within Visual Studio. So we'll say New Project. And then under our New Project dialog, we'll want to click on Web. And as I mentioned in the first week, um, if you're using the Visual Studio 2012 version, you'll probably see a long series or list of options. Um, the one you will want to choose is the ASP.NET MVC web application. If you're using Visual Studio 2013 as I am, then you will want to choose ASP.NET web application. I'm going to name this application week 4 MVC. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'll get a prompt asking me for the template I want to use. I'm going to use MVC. And for this, I'm going to click on Change Authentication on the right and choose No Authentication. And then I'll hit OK. Visual Studio will go through and scaffold up for me a MVC application, getting all of the folders and appropriate libraries in place. And once it does that, I'll get this nice little welcome screen. I'm going to dismiss that. And I'm now sitting inside of my MVC application. So the first thing I want to kind of go over is, again, the logistics of what a basic MVC application looks like. Uh, so we have three primary folders. We have a views folder, a models folder, and a controllers folder. So model controller view or model view controller is our MVC framework. So we now have our application, everything is in place, and what Razor, which is our topic today, what it really focuses around is the building of our views. So Razor syntax is a syntax or pseudo language that was developed for MVC to simplify the process of creating web pages and incorporating content into those web pages. Uh, traditionally, when you wanted to incorporate or include server code into an ASP.NET page, you would use a syntax that looks something like this, which is the uh, angle bracket percent sign percent angle. Um, what this would do for you is it would de delineate server code, code that needed to be executed on the server before it was returned back to the client. Uh, with Razor, that syntax has been greatly simplified, and it's basically an at symbol followed by either reference to server code or if you use things like angle or curly brackets, you can actually type in C sharp code into your page. We'll look first of all at our view start, and you'll see that this is a basic example of Razor. So we have an at symbol, some curly brackets, and then this is actually server code. This says to um, the MVC app, it says that our layout is located at view slash shared slash underscore layout dot CSHTML. So if we look under our views folder, we'll see a shared folder, and inside of shared, we'll see underscore layout dot CSHTML. Now, this is the HTML and Razor uh, syntax that exists for our layout. Now, if you are familiar with HTML, you should look at this and say, okay, I see some pretty uh, familiar elements, but I also see some rather unusual elements, and I'm not really sure what all of this means. Looking at this at first glance, it shouldn't look that unusual. What you probably are thinking is, okay, I see all of these at symbols kind of sprinkled throughout the page, and there's this HTML dot. Um, what these are, these are the Razor syntax components. Now, Razor is a surprisingly smart language. Uh, Razor was designed to be very non-intrusive, but be very decorative and rather explanatory in its right. 
Um, the way that Razor works is that whenever we want to do something that is server code that needs to be run, we start with an at symbol and then we type in our C sharp essentially. Um, so we have access to certain elements when we're running within the Razor syntax or context. Um, we have actions that we can access, we have classes that we have access to, basically anything you could think of within the .NET framework you can access using this Razor syntax. Now there are tools that are kind of built into MVC that help us through some of this work. Um, we have certain components underneath that give us functionality, so we have access to this application instance which will give us access to a lot of asynchronous methods. It'll give us access to the context for this page. Um, and that's the HTTP context, so that's things like the request, the response streams, um, error handling, server information. We have access to um, particular models that are loaded into ASP.NET, a whole slew of events that we can wire into. Uh, site details and user information. So there's a lot of good stuff that we can get um, in our application. There are also a series of helper properties. Uh, one in particular is the HTML helper. And what this helper enables us to do is it allows us to gain access to additional features that help us to pull and push data from the controllers. So it helps us to kind of grasp data from a controller, move and push that around, and then eventually push data back either into to the user or to pass it off to another controller. So we're not going to mess with this layout CSHTML a lot. Um, for the most part right now, I think we're going to leave it as is. Uh, just so you can see what this HTML looks like, I'm going to go ahead and compile and run this application and we can look at the default for it. So we have the application name, our home, about, contact. This is our navigation bar across the top. And then you'll notice that there's a lot more here. There's this ASP.NET, getting started, more libraries, web hosting. None of this was showing in this layout page. All of this content that we're seeing is actually getting rendered inside of this render body space. So where's render body getting this information from? This information is coming from the specific view that is tied to the controller that handled this call. So if we go into our controller, our home controller is the only controller that currently is defined. This home controller is the default controller for all new MVC applications. So when you do new project MVC app, you automatically get a home controller and that controller becomes the default controller for your project. That can be customized or changed, but by default you get one home controller and three action methods. So along with the default home controller, we have one default action, which is index. So the index action is called when we first visit the web page. So we have no details around our controller or action on the right hand side of our URL. So this assumes that we want to hit the home controller index default action. So from this index default action, MVC says, okay, this is the index action. Therefore, we're going to go into the views folder, find the home folder that matches the home controller and then we're going to find the index view that matches the index action. So again index, index view. In the home controller we actually have this return view method or, or line so return and then it calls a method view with no parameters this method tells MVC to go find this view and return it. So if we look inside of the index view, we'll see a lot of what we saw from the actual web page itself. So 
ASP.NET. ASP.NET is a free web framework for building great websites and web applications using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. ASP.NET. ASP.NET is a free web framework for building great websites and web applications using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So this is the actual markup that we see on the web page. Now obviously there's style sheets being applied and other things that are happening to make it look this way, but in the most simplistic sense, what we're seeing on this page, aside from the navigation bar, is coming from this view. So that data works and interacts back and forth. Now to make this all kind of flow and, and we can see how those pieces work together, let's go back to our home controller. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new action. So I'm going to say public action result. And I'll call my action hello world. It's classic, right? <laughs> Uh, so what I'll do from this is I'm going to say return view and what I can do is right click within this action and I can choose add view add view this wizard will identify this method name as hello world it will then give my view the same name um, this view will use the layout page. Now I can point to a specific one, or if I leave it blank, it will use the default from the view start, which in this case is underscore layout.cshtml. Um, templates we won't get into right now. Model classes we won't get into right now. We'll just go ahead and hit add. So Visual Studio will scaffold for us. Uh, it sets this view bag dot title at the top of our page inside of the razor syntax region viewbag.title is referenced in the underscore layout in the title element so you see here where it says viewbag.title this line pulls its data from a viewbag uh, property of the view and it pulls from the title property so what is stored here hello world will get rendered here in the title tag and then below that we just have a simple h2 tag so if we go ahead and run our application we end up landing on our hello world action now notice the navigation it says home slash hello world so this URL tells MVC that we need to go to the home controller in the hello world action by putting these elements in here that gives us the correct view that we want to see if I were to come back here and say home slash index that brings up that default index action off the home controller if I just say slash home, we still get the default index action. And if I remove slash home, then we still end up with the home controller default index action. I can also do home slash contact. I think it's just contact. That'll bring up the contact page, or I can say home slash hello world, which brings up our hello world page. Now what's nice with MVC is that you can go in and say this is my first MVC page and we'll make a save. We haven't recompiled anything, we just save changes to that page. We can refresh and those changes from the view file get brought right into our application. So it's very much like editing an HTML document. Those changes are uh, represented automatically once that file is saved there's no need to go in and recompile to make those changes if you make changes to the controller however you do need to recompile because the controller code is a true C sharp class and it gets compiled into a DLL so let's say that we wanted to make this message a little more dynamic the first thing we would do is we need to go back to our home controller and we can do a few different things here. We can store data that we want to pass to our view in the view bag. 
So we have access to the view bag from the controller and from the view. So it's a, it's a shared um, space where you can add properties to the view bag and push and pull data from there. So we can say view bag dot hello message equals this is my first ASP net or my first MVC page and then from the hello world view we could say view bag dot hello message now you notice we don't have to end this line with a semicolon. Razor does not require that. The only exception for that is when we put actual C sharp code inside of curly brackets. At that point, we need to then complete it with a semicolon. But by default, Razor identifies what is code, what is server side code versus what is HTML, and it does that parsing for us automatically. So if we hit F5. We'll pull up our Hello World page after it compiles. And there is our same line of code coming from the view bag, which is being set in our controller. So we're actually pushing data from the controller into a view bag, which is ultimately making it to our view. Now, that's a very simplified version of how Razor works. Um, as we get into the course in more detail and we get into later parts of this lecture set, um, we'll see more about how Razor evolves and how we use it. Um, but for a very simple kind of brief first glance of Razor, um, I hope this helps. This makes a little bit of sense to you, being able to use things like the view bag um, to push and pull data into your application and then ultimately gain access to it from your controller. Um, one piece that may be worth mentioning, I just realized that I actually put an at sign in my C sharp code. Um, that is not necessary. I do want to clarify that just in case that may have caught anyone off guard. Um, it did compile and it did work with that, um, but it's not necessary when you're inside of a .cs or C sharp file. You only need it when you're inside of the CS HTML uh, files.